You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So we may on sort of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you with a let's play episode of Lust Shards, Tate's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. The naturally tall trees surrounding the camp give enough shade that you might mistake the time of day for evening. The somewhat obscure place is being illuminated more by fire than sun. Fire made by torches, campfires, but also a huge pyre in the middle of the camp where the wyvern used to reside. Why is Kavathi's place burning? Is he okay? No, I keep failing to provide simple information, thinking it is common knowledge. You see, we are supposed to prepare a new place for Kavathi to sleep on every day while he is in growing. He is in his growing stage. After he awakes from his long daily slumber, we burn the offerings, believing that this way it will burn his earthly attachments and grow faster. This is all so confusing. I would be happy to answer any questions you have, just perhaps later. For now, let me show you the rest of the camp. I really want you to meet your friend and Kavath, Kavath. I really want to meet your friend and Kavathi's savior, but I'm assuming the chief must eat him a little longer. I follow Eureka again through different parts of the so-called camp. Most of it is empty since people are celebrating around the pyre already. He shows me where food is stored, the bathrooms with impressive sewage systems, and the trading huts. You can help yourself with any food, cloth, or people you need. Anyone would be happy to provide our guests with anything. People? Yes, if you need lust release, just enter one of those barracks and somebody will be with you shortly. You can then take you can then turn them away if their bodies are not to your liking, or wait, 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 just like that? Why well, yes. As I said, it would be an honor for anyone. Looking around, the few nightfallers still around their glances in my direction as if waiting for the moment I step in said barracks. I'll pass for now. As you wish, in that case, let's move on. We walk past his medicine hut, of which Eureka is very proud. Nobody gets sick with me around. After a minute or two of walking and after a couple of history lessons about the camp's walls, I realize he reminds me a lot of a certain cat I know. A little surprise encounter makes him get quiet and stop in place. The lizard from earlier is done with his task given by the bear. He looks at me with an intense gaze before shaking his head and turning to Eureka. He seems to be looking for his next order. Um, Kulistu Guru? Eureka looks uncomfortable with him around. He dips his head and walks away slowly, turning his head towards me one last time. Sorry about that. We should go back. We don't want to miss your friend's arrival. I'm keeping my mouth shut about the lizard for now, since nobody's in a hurry to explain his presence to me. <gasps> Look! It's your partner, the other savior of Kavathi! I want to make a good first impression so badly. What is his name? Do you mind introducing me? Of course not. Come on. I bet he'll like you. He likes cheerful and happy people. It's uh, prov it's pri proving a little hard to get to him. A group of wild furs dancing around the fire, blocking our way with unpredictable movements. We get to see the wyvern safe and sound, following a large bear around, whose name I believe was Ruth. Aw. My cat friend atop his shoulder is any kind of worry, doubt, or anger completely gone from his face. Replaced by the cheerfulness he was originally named after, Tate. I miss him. The wyvern is desperately trying to fly its way in his arms like a puppy begging for attention, but his pitiful wings are not developed enough. Yells of encouragement are still being thrown at him from nightfall and all around. His meeting with the chief must have been a success, then. Should we perhaps not bother them? At that moment, the cat's eyes target us like arrows as we stand at the edge of the crowd that is just getting bigger and bigger. Ruth! Takiki! He points towards us, and the bear with the cat on his shoulders, who towers over everyone else, steps through towards us. Obviously, being the life of the gathering here, and the ones of Kavathi and the ones that Kavathi follows, most night fall and follow them, bringing the deafening voices along. Hey, Luku is feeling much better. You even learned some of their language already? Yep. The chief told me so many things in surprising detail; it's hard not to believe him. Get this: apparently, my real name, or at least the name he gave me when they found me, is Kusani which means something like the one that does it. I'm not sure what that really means, but it sounds like I actually have a purpose now, the one that does it. I wonder what that could mean, huh? That's great. Is that the name you'll use from now on? Yeah, do you like it? It's interesting, much better than Tartarus in any case. Don't even remind me. From now on, refer to me by Kasani, please. If that's what you wish. At least now I have a name to address him by. And this is Ruth. You saw him before. Sure. Can't forget. Sure did. Can't forget that towering body. He grunts, satisfied in response. He is apparently my caretaker in the chief's left hand. Ragnar's the right, of course. <clears throat> oh, 
Kasani, this is Eureka, Ragnar's partner and my guide for today. I heard your name before. Ruth here can't stop talking about you. Hey. Eureka, pretty. Hm. Aw, he has a crush. Actually, he has a crush on you, Travis. But me? Oh, he just loves you. Hearing the word love, Ruth gets flustered, panicked even, immediately getting red beneath the mask. Kusani, no, that's not true. Yeah, he does. He's been eyeing you as soon as we step through the gate. I, I danger, I look for danger then. Yeah, because these five feet tall kitties are such a danger to you, big boy. Ruth, like little Travis, only little, little love. There's a book by its cover because apparently this huge intimidating nightfall is actually just a big teddy bear. Letting a cat five times smaller in mass play with his ears, accessories, and even squeeze his muscles jokingly. I might need some help in this foreign social interaction. I squat down and turn around, signaling to Eureka to do the same. Psst, Eureka, how do you respond to confessions around here? Usually you go to the breeding hut and see how you both like it. If you're both satisfied in the end, you move on to be partners. If not, you can try again later or go see other furs. Is there something closer to the way my culture does it? You can claim you're sick, but I doubt it would work. <laughs> huh. Very helpful. I'm sorry. It's quite unheard of to refuse a public invitation like that. Look, I'll tell him you're just not interested and you can go sit somewhere down and... It's okay, I'll think of something myself. What are you two whispering there about? You're making Ruth feel anxious. The crowd around us are now making less noise as they are caught up to the situation. Kasani has a stupid grin on his face, obviously enjoying watching introverts suffer. Um, Ruth? Uh, me, uh, you? You, big, strong, grr. I flex my arms, and I believe Ruth takes these words as compliments. Me? Me weak. Me little. Yes, little partner. Big partner. Like Eureka Ragnar. No, 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 Eureka's strong. Very, very strong. Me? Me nerd. Nerd? Um, weak like female. That's sexist, Travis. <laughs> Sex? Yes, this way. No! No, 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 that's not what I meant. Oh, you awkward hot bitch. Thanks? Here, I'll help you. Ruth, uh, shisk Travis twerp stew. Ah, twerp. Everyone listening seems disappointed, almost as much as Ruth. What? Eureka, what did he say? It means you're already taken. Of course, the good old I have a boyfriend excuse. How did I forget about it? Now, let's change the subject. Please. How did you find our camp so far, Kasani? It's awesome. It's like living in my tent, with, but, with a, but with a community at a, at a larger scale. I got like 20 hookups lined up, but I'm going to have to deny them all because I only have eyes for one person. Aww. He looks lovingly at Kavathi biting at someone's tail. Aww. Okay. Well, me and Eureka are actually here to tell you that the feast is in preparation, so you should all get ready soon. Oh man, I'm starving actually. We haven't eaten anything all day, have we? <laughs> Just please tell me you don't serve fish here. A large variety of dishes in our culture requires we use fish to... No fish. But we have... No fish. <sighs> no fish. Got it. You can't just tell them not to serve their hard work because you don't like it. All right, fine. Just don't put it on my side of the table. Do you have any meal preferences, Travis? Uh, no, because I'm not a spoiled little brat. Hmm. Understood. He whispers a couple of words to a random fur who books it toward the narrow path. Uh, something's wrong. Deathly silence follows that statement from every nightfall within earshot. Apparently even the ones that don't speak English now know that tone of voice. They wait and listen to the cat. Oh god. The music isn't playing loud enough. Luxa, turny Musa! Of course. The drums, now accompanied by their instruments as well, start playing a joyful tune and everybody's feet catch fire. Uh, metaphorically. Hey, Travis, how old are you? Uh huh, why? Just tell me. Uh, 19, you know that. Are you sure? I thought it was more like 90, judging by your stiff, unmoving body. Come on, move those juicy hips. You're the one talking, just standing on Ruth's shoulders like that. All you're doing is throwing your, is throwing your hands in the air. <laughs> At least I have a pair to dance with. Eureka, do you dance? Only if I have a pair. He glances at me, shuffling his feet and batting his eyelashes. 
Ah, uh, I guess I didn't come here not to have fun. Would you give me the honor of hurling your limbs around in sync with mine? It would be my pleasure. Woohoo! I would like to say I danced like a professional, that my moves were unmatched, but something even better happened. It might be hard to believe, but secluded wild people don't have the same standards we have for dancing, nor the popular pop or electro music we're so used to, so I got away with acting like an unpredictable hurricane in the middle of the crowd with Eureka adding his own moves. At one point, Kasani turned around on top of Ruth's shoulders, holding tight with his legs around his head, while he spun around, high, while he spun around at high speed. It was a little weird seeing my friend stick his whole ass and bulge in Ruth's face, but... Hey, they were having fun. Nothing sexual came out of it, so I shut my mouth. Twenty minutes of energized movements around the fire later, and I was met with damp, sweaty clothes. Eureka makes way for us to get out of the crowd, and we settle on watching the others continue to mess around. That was fun. Yeah, too bad I don't have the stamina. How do you do it? Living in the wilderness might have something to do with it. Of course, physical activity. Something I avoided all my life. You dance really well. Think so? I literally fell down twice. Were you not heroically jumping in front of Kavathi so he doesn't throw himself into the pyre? Uh, nope. Ah. Your fall still stopped him from doing so, which means that in my eyes you're a masterful dancer. You're gonna make me blush. Did I not already? My, I'm getting old then. No, don't say that. You're still hot. I mean, young. I think. Why, thank you. Change the subject, change the subject, change the subject. Thankfully, he changes it for me, so we don't dwell in awkward silence. Your clothes are wet. Yeah, a little stamina comes with a price. Would you like to change them? We can put them up to dry in the sun. I didn't bring a spare, and I don't want to make my friend teleport me all the way back. So I'll endure it. Didn't you say before you want to be more included? Why don't we go find you a little something to cover up while somebody washes and dries your clothes? Hmm, alright, I'm into it. Fantastic, come with me! We avoid the big crowd of loud furs and walk across the camp, following the lines of huts and tents near the fence. Although it is a day of celebration, a lot of residents are going about their daily life as if nothing happened. Washing clothes, preparing leather, carpentry, and many more activities don't necessarily have the privilege of taking a day off. I can't help but turn my head towards the lizard nightfallen from before, who especially can't catch a break. He's on his knees, weeding a patch of grass around one of the tents as we walk by, but being before being sent to fetch water from the pond, to put out the pyre when the time comes. He points towards two large buckets filled with water, saying something under his breath, in a language that seems a bit different than what the wild furs are using. It's not something the wild fur nightfall in front of him wanted to hear, winning him a winning him a heavy backhand slap in the face before being sent again with a warning. I'm not sure how to react or if I should ask questions about it, but Eureka doesn't bat an eye, so I'll keep it to myself as well. The working people around give me a lot of different looks, either because I'm their chosen savior guest or because they think I look weird. Hey, do you think my clothes are weird? Why do you ask? Well, some of your tribe mates are looking questionably at me. Well, yeah. It is definitely weirder than your friend's outfit. How's my outfit weirder? At first, the colors are too bright. Too white, easy to spot in the wild. What a revelation. Secondly, every part of your body save for your head and hands is covered. That is highly unusual, especially since your friend is more uncovered. They might think you're his personal sex object, something very alluring to the eye, prohibited to touch by anyone else. You're forced to dress more so others don't get dirty thoughts. I suddenly feel really good about changing. Eureka lets me enter first inside a tent, more colorful than the others, decorated with animals made of cloth and butterflies of silk, their own different take on origami. This place screams, come here to get dressed. Inside is a single petite mongoose lady who bows to us, but stays out of our way as much as possible otherwise, unlike retailers and vendors in normal society. I'm thinking about something simple, something comfortable, that will turn heads, but not in a bad way. Alright y'all, I'm actually gonna pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can, it always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5 already. I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.